This will be the first of Donald Trump's four criminal prosecutions. It is, as you just heard, about hush money payments to cover up a sex scandal during the 2016 election. Joining me on the morning show, News for Jack's political analyst and head of the JU Public Policy Institute, Rick Mullaney. Good morning, Rick. Good morning, Bruce. So this case is historic. Historic because it's the first time a former president is being tried on criminal charges and the first time that if convicted, a former president could face jail time. Bruce, today the nation will witness something it's never seen before, and that is a former president going on trial in a criminal case. And by the way, not just the former president, one who's running for president and is the presumptive Republican nominee. A year ago, Bruce, back in March, when these charges were brought, it actually helped Donald Trump. It helped him in polling, it helped him in fundraising, and it gave him the opportunity to define this as politically motivated. But here we are on the it, beginning jury selection, and it's problematic for the former president. He's going to be tied up for maybe six to eight weeks or however long. Instead of campaigning in those swing states, he'll be in the courtroom. And maybe even more problematic is the message. He wants to be talking about immigration and inflation, and instead there's going to be, high, there are going to be high, uh, highlights and, and news coverage of this trial. It is a problem for the former president, but make no mistake, the country's never seen anything like this. It begins today. As you just outlined, this is a case with few precedents. And in the midst of a political maelstorm, in the middle of that storm is Manhattan's first black DA, Alvin Bragg, who is prosecuting the case. He says he's apolitical and, and compares his prosecution of this case to that of any other financial crime. Yet Bragg's at the center of that political storm as well. He has to play quite a balancing act. He does, Bruce. In the end, he's been highly criticized by the right. For example, the Wall Street Journal just last Friday said this case never should have been brought. He's been applauded by the left, saying no person is above the law, and that applies uh, to Donald Trump. But the backdrop is problematic. The Manhattan DA's office, his office, declined to prosecute this case before him. The Southern District of New York, the federal office, declined to prosecute. The Federal Exchange Commission, and Elections Commission, excuse me, said there was no, nothing that they were going to bring forward for a campaign violation. Despite that backdrop and the running of the statute of limitations on the business records, he's gone forward claiming it was to conceal an underlying crime. Therefore, he is at the center of the storm. Donald Trump says it's political. Those on the left say this is about the rule of law. It begins today. Jury selection begins today. And when all is said and done, Mr. Trump will face a jury of 12 and six alternates. This jury selection is no easy task. The challenges for both the prosecution and the defense in choosing that jury. Bruce, it really is difficult. What the court wants and what the system wants is a fair and impartial jury, one that can listen to the facts and apply the law. But we have a partisan divide in this country and that partisan divide will be in New York and is in New York. For Donald Trump, part of the challenge here is it's a very blue city, a very blue state, 87% voting for Joe Biden. For the prosecution, their challenge is a little bit different. Remember, this is a 12-person jury. In Florida, there's only two times you get a 12-person jury. That's in a death penalty case or in an eminent domain case to take your property. So in Florida, if they're going to take your life or take your property, you get 12 jurors. In New York, it's 12 jurors, and the verdict has to be unanimous. For the prosecution, their concern is one of those strong-feeling Republicans, one of the is a holdout that could result in a, ha a hung jury. So for both Donald Trump and for the prosecution, it's problematic. Hundreds of jurors are going to be questioned. This doesn't take place in a vacuum. Strong feelings about Donald Trump. Jury selection will be very challenging. Jury challenge to the Donald Trump challenge. Um, we know that Donald Trump has been admonished in court before. He's been disruptive, to say the least. Let's talk about that challenge. Um, can he contain himself? Bruce, this one's a little bit different. This is a criminal case. And in the criminal case, he's required to be in court. In the civil case, he wasn't required to be. Um, he did testify there, by the way, and he was, he was very disruptive at times in that civil case. I think the expectation here is different. In the criminal case, when he's in the courtroom, I, I'd be very surprised if he's disruptive. The challenge may be when he walks out. They will not have court on Wednesdays. He will be campaigning on weekends. What does Donald Trump say when he goes to the microphone when he walks out each day? He's somewhat unpredictable. But in a criminal proceeding, which is a serious matter, despite his claim that it's politically motivated, it's a serious matter. I do not expect him to be disruptive during the trial. However, how he conducts himself when he walks out the door at the end of the day and on Wednesdays, I'm not so sure. But if he does, Judge Marchand can threaten to boot him Donald said in the past, I'd love it. Real challenge in a criminal case of booting the defendant, but the judge does have some tools at his disposal. He can hold him in contempt. He can actually sentence him to jail. He can impose fines. He can issue other orders. So there are some things he can do if Donald Trump is disruptive in that way. We would all hope that that's not the case. 
Okay. It's going to be played out and played out very publicly, so we're going to wait and see what happens. Rick Mullaney, we'll be talking about it more. Appreciate it. Thanks Thank for being here. Good being with you, Bruce. All right.